can be a dish, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, that was too much fun not to start the video with my friend Natalia <laughs> admitting to her own biatchiness. So today's video is all about the other aspects of the fourth line that I didn't cover in the first two videos. So this series covered in the first video all the warmth and friendliness of the four. The second video was all about the opportunistic nature and how the four is here to influence. And today we're covering all the other aspects and all the other keynotes of the fourth line. If we haven't met yet, I'm Karen. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I, I share human design and channeled messages to help you get really clear about what your role is right now on the planet as a leader and how to step into that next level of self-expression. And since you are a fourth line like me, I would love to just ask that if you love this video and you like the series, then please share this information with your other fourth line friends since you're a natural networker. Networker, thank you for that. Kindness or meanness. The fourth line can, in general, is very kind, very, again, we talked about the warmth and, and the friendliness, a natural kindness, a natural generosity of spirit. Um, however, that can turn into the binary of meanness. Oftentimes in human design, we're always dealing with binaries, duality. So it's like a, a swinging from being very kind to actually being mean and cruel and uh, the fourth line can be very cruel because they're because they understand human psychology so well they know just exactly how to hurt you the most uh, so let's hear what some of my friends had to say about their own mean streak it deals with um, investing so much in your friends uh, because I, when I trust so much and when I am so open and so generous to a person, I expect the same in response. And if a person doesn't ready to be so open, doesn't ready to be my confidant and uh, doesn't want to share his or her secrets with me, like more closed. In this case, sometimes I can feel even like I'm betrayed to some extent. I have this feeling like, I want to be friend with you, I want to be close, I'm, I'm so open. Why would you hide something from me? So in this case, and if I can see that this is really something, this is not about friendship in this case. I can be sometimes really mean. <laughs> in general, I'm a very kind person, very generous and very supportive and yeah, eager to help with anything. I'm, 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 I like who I am in that, kind, in that context or you know, when it comes to kindness and stuff like that. Where I can turn mean is um, when sometimes I, I it'd be interesting i should be more observant of myself when the difference is because when i when someone else is acting out of an insecurity sometimes in certain contexts i could be very empathetic and patient and and um and really supportive to try to help somebody work through the insecurity and other times their insecurity will just rub me the wrong way and then i just like it's like i start sticking my fingers in the wounds like and i get nasty and whatever the insecurity is about then i just start i start attacking them on those grounds you know um yeah so when i'm being mean that's definitely how it looks like and a, and a lot of times it's um it'll be some way that i just make somebody feel stupid is what usually what my meanness looks like i find my meanness comes out if i really am not straightforward with people about needing my space because the like there's a period of time like when I first get up in the morning that I need an hour I need an hour to do my meditation I need it you know 
And I have a little sign that I usually put on the door that says, you know, don't knock, you know, whenever I'm in my alone time. And there's sometimes that I won't put that sign on the door and somebody will knock and then I'll get mad at them <laughs> because they knocked um, during my time. But it's like, I didn't put the sign up there. So they're not mind readers. So they don't know that I need that time. So then they'll knock and I'll be, you know, agitated and react agitated. Uh, I would rather express it in a way that I just, I'm, I'm just not interested much. Like, as I told you the other day, I remember, um, I'm not very much into when, when I do the uh, body graph analysis, yeah, when I prepare for reading, when I take a client, uh, I can see the difference uh, in my interest to the client and to the body graph. If there is a big difference, if it is a person I know. Maybe not a friend, but at least I know this person somehow. And this is somebody who came just from internet and I've never met this guy and uh, I've never seen him and never talked to him. So I have nothing to, no experience in, inter no interaction with this person. In this case, the different, uh, the, the interest is very different. It's very low. So I don't know whether it is about me and being mean or not, but... Another dualistic aspect of the four is people fatigue. That despite their warmth and friendliness and this natural heart-centered ability to deeply connect with people and a desire to connect, that uh, fours will reach a point of people fatigue or exhaustion with people and burnout. And, and need to really retreat from people. This is also really coupled with the fact that you're either a one, you either have a one in your profile, a two or a six. The one, the investigator, also loves to be alone, just researching. The two, the hermit, loves to be alone, doing its thing. And the six, uh, the role model, also loves to be alone and just detached from people. So. The other aspect of your profile, regardless of whether you're a 1-4, a 4-1, a 2-4, or a 4-6, is you're going to be having this desire to be alone. And inherent in that is a conflict where you've got, I want to connect, I'm exhausted, I, I, I don't want to be with people, like sometimes it feels like ever again. So um, yeah, that's just an aspect of being a four to embrace and honor the times where you feel like you just want to be alone, really honor, honor that and then also honor the impulse to connect. The people fatigue as a line four and especially I think as a two four profile shows up for me pretty strongly, especially I find in business because that's where I have so many relationships with people. I feel like I become friends with all of my clients and after I go through periods of like really being out there and connecting in my business or launching something, the fatigue hits and I'm just like out. Like I cannot continue to show up. I sort of drop off social media for a little bit and I used to really be upset about that because it felt like it wasn't, I don't know, the right thing to do. But I've also really learned to respect my energy and when I hit those limits because if you continue or if I continue to force myself to show up, it's not going to have the same impact. It's not going to create the type of relationships that I want to create and it's kind of just disingenuous. So I really allow myself when I reach that people fatigue to just turn off and not do anything and you know, watch TV for a little while, go out for lots of walks. I find being outside in nature is so helpful and like just not being around people. Even if I'm outside in nature and there's like people around, I'm like, oh, there's too many people in this park, you know? It's like I need to be alone, away from people. Yeah, people fatigue. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can definitely feel that. Um, and again, it's because I invest so much in my relationships with my friends. I really, uh, when I meet them, I'm really open to communication, to interactions, to, I don't know, whatever we do together. And I spend so much energy and then I really get tired.
I need some rest. I need to be alone and I need I need some rest and only that uh, only after that I can like again go to the society, go to the people. <laughs> the, the size of a group really influences how I interact and how comfortable I am. If it's too many people and there's lots of pop uh, you know, personalities and lots of noise and things going on. That's really too much for me to process. Um, and then that's when I would draw um, because I, I can't handle like too much going on at once. Um, I definitely relate to connecting and connection. Uh, to me, that's like a primary driver of mine and val a primary value, but also a source of insecurity too like if i don't have it yeah and i place a lot of my my self-worth in in the in the quality of the of connection that i'm experiencing at any given time so there's that uh there's that side of it the people fatigue i don't i don't experience that very often the only um the only times i think where i get where i do experience people fatigue is when the is when I'm in an environment where the connection is shallow. So like an example would be, you know, sitting in a room or around a campfire and, and it's just for whatever reason, the context of the group that's there, whatever, whether it's two people or 10 people or whatever it is, that the conversation is very surface or like what people would consider small talk, let's say. That I find draining over time. And it's just, and sometimes mildly frustrating that the that the connection is shallow, you know, and, and at least in the way I experience it and perceive it. Abdication. This is a great keynote for the fourth line. So abdication means that if you sense at any point that someone is not corruptible, this is another keynote word for the four, is they can sense if someone is cor corruptible or not. So if they're receptive to influence or not, the moment that you sense that someone's not actually receptive to your influence, the fourth line is going to abdicate. And they'll just say, oh, oh, okay, I'm backing off. I have nothing to say, no, no words. My friend who's a two four says, I'm not gonna put pearls before swine. So that's this um, exact idea that, that Justin expresses here when I'm in that kind of, especially if I'm in that evangelical mode and someone just isn't having it, you know, like someone's just like, Oh, that's bullshit. I don't believe that or something like that. Um, they're just not, yeah, they're, they're just not being influenced at all, but why, by, by what I'm saying or how I'm saying it. And uh, then I can, yeah, that definitely triggers me. And then I can get pretty, um, one of two things will happen. Either I'll just shut down and just be like, oh, okay, you don't deserve any of this then. And I, that's the last you'll hear from me. And I just don't give them any value or try to teach them anything or just like, um, or sometimes I'll react in a way that, you know, my tone and my phraseology will change with the intention of making them feel dumb. You know what I mean? Like try to, I'll intentionally like make sure I'm outwitting them or, Things like that to, to, you know, again, these aren't, I'm not saying these are like great qualities or anything. I just, that's how I can, I, but I definitely can react that way. I've had, I've definitely had haters over the years um, being in a business where, you know, my persona was out there a bit, you know, um, haters, I tend to like, my reaction is to try to provoke them further. And so I think since I was little, the way I've thought about it is if somebody is reacting irrationally and like, and trying to tr transfer that upset to me, my reaction is to say, no, I'm not going to take that. And I'm going to try to amplify your upset. And um, so, you know, I'm not saying that's like a the right way to be or a righteous way to be or anything like that. And I've done that a lot in my life. So there was this person that they made some threat one time and they were going to show up at an event that we were putting on in LA. And, uh, and I forget what the person wanted from me and was expecting me to do. 
But instead, I replied with an invitation to the next like seven or eight events and gave them like the times, the dates and the venues and all the stuff. And as, you know, just as my way of saying like, you know, Hey, I get, you're, you're trying to make me feel bad right now. I'm not going to do that. And here's a way I'm going to communicate in this kind of, I don't know if it's a form of like passive aggressive or something, but I'm going to communicate to you in a way that you're going to be way more agitated than when this conversation started. One final keynote binary to share about the fourth line is benefactor or dependent. So the fourth line may tend to be a dependent earlier in their life or at certain points in their life, meaning they're going to depend on someone else to provide for them. And that's their survival strategy. Uh, but they can also, once they've got their footing set in life and they've figured things out, become a benefactor for others. So they, they have this philanthropic benefactor nature that wants to give and provide. I know for myself, I have been both a benefactor and a dependent at the same time. But in general, I would say that fours are later bloomers, it, generally speaking, that they can be dependent for a while. And if you have a four in your life that, or you are a four who is dependent, then just know that you're in a process of really building your foundation to be able to eventually become a benefactor. So again, don't lose hope. Um, just keep going at your, your vision of how you can be sharing yourself in the world. The part about the benefactor, again, was a very intriguing thing for me in that through my life, it has always felt that I have been taken care of in some way shape or form that somehow the universe was always looking out for me and um even when my faith wasn't there even when my trust had kind of waned that i was feeling wobbly on my own two feet somehow a guide a teacher a benefactor of some kind um, that offered financial um, opportunities would come along at the perfect time, offering the perfect thing. It was as if that sense of being the magnetizer of the perfect opportunity would come along. And so even now when I've been thinking, okay, so what are my next steps? Um, when I first started writing, I had no idea that I wanted to be a writer or that my soul had come here to initially be a writer and put my voice out into the world. Um, I came across a woman on Facebook and she's ended up being my publisher now and has given me those beautiful opportunities to get my words out there into the world. And so, again, it's waiting for the right people to come along. And there's something about find, feeling that sense in the body that these are the people that you are meant to be in relationship with. But like I said, um, one of the biggest things for me is learning self-care and pacing myself. Um, and letting go of the idea that I'm meant to be this massive influencer that influences everybody and being out in the world, it feels much more calmer, much more safer, much more friendlier, much more aligned to have the people that know me um, tell their friends about me and to have my friends be around me um, and watch things grow organically. Fours, I love you so much. I hope you enjoy the other part of your videos about whether it's the one, the two, or the six. So you can find that here in the profile playlist on my channel. 
And I also offer readings, so I'm available um, through karenmcmullen.ca. You can always find me there, as well as through social media. If you ever want to connect, I host a Facebook networking group network <laughs> as a fourth line. I create opportunities for you to influence in my network. It's called the Grid Network for Light Leaders. So you're welcome to join us there as well as through Instagram and Facebook. I share like lots more fun stuff, dancing, uh, my personal life. So you can find all the links to that in the description box below. And I hope we can connect um, and um, through those avenues that I've created. So thank you and I will see you again here on my channel. Bye.